older gentleman come running, waving an umbrella, and he had a German shepherd dog on his leash. Well, he yelled some commands and let go of the dog, and that dog, if you can picture, I am now the one that's holding me, okay? His arm was extended like this, and the dog went right for his arm, and the only thing I could see was blood dripping down. He let go of me, and the two of them ran off. I had rope burns on my neck for the next two years. Unfortunately, I had no other effects from this, except that I still remember it very, very vividly. Around that time over in Germany, the attack on Jews became more and more obvious, and Jews were designated as the enemy, as inhuman, and anything else you want to call it. We were made to wear yellow stars of David on our clothing. In public places they had benches that were yellow that only Jews could sit on. Obviously you didn't see many benches occupied. Because at any time any of the German troops, the SS, the SA, the stormtroopers, they could approach you ask you for an ID and shoot you on sight if they so choose or chose. Right after this started taking place, the Jews were forbidden from going into certain shops. So it reminded me what takes place in this country or took place in this country here when blacks were suffering no blacks allowed, no blacks here. Well, the same thing happened over there. No Jews allowed. You made yourself as inconspicuous as possible during the daytime, and you made yourself inconspicuous as possible at night by not being outdoors. You did not stay in your own home or in your own apartment too long because eventually they would catch up with you. So we had, a, we had a series of homes that we visited, and these people, well, they were all Christian people. They always took care of us. This hiding at night was really, it was sort of traumatic in a way, because you didn't have anything. You didn't have a home. You didn't have a belonging or a sense of belonging. You just moved. You were constantly on the move. And the main thing that you had to do was to remain inconspicuous. Now all of this went on through 1937 and into 1938. And in November of 1938, the famous Kristallnacht, or the Night of the Broken Glass, took place. It was a massive, coordinated attack on Jews throughout Germany on the night of November 9th, 1938, and into the next day. The attack came after a young man by the name of Herschel Greenspan, a 17-year-old Jew living in Paris, shot and killed a member of the German embassy staff there in retaliation for the poor treatment his father and his family suffered at the hands of the Nazis in Germany. What actually happened was, a few weeks prior to that, the Greenspan family and over 15,000 other Jews, originally from Poland, had been expelled from Germany without any warning. They were forcibly transported by train and boxcars and then dumped at the, Jewish, at the Polish border. For Hitler and Propaganda Minister Goebbels, the shooting in Paris provided an opportunity to incite Germans to rise in bloody vengeance against the Jews. On November 9th, mob violence broke out as the regular German police stood by and crowds of spectators watched. 
Nazi stormtroopers, along with members of the SS and the Hitler Youth Movement, beat and murdered Jews, broke into and wrecked Jewish homes, and brutalized Jewish families and their children. There was a man, a general in uh, Hitler's staff, Hermann Goering was his name. He was a field marshal, a very high rank, the equivalent of chief of staff in this country. And after many meetings on the 12th of November, I'm going to go back to the 9th in a moment, but after many meetings on the 12th of November with Hitler and his staff, Goering made these closing remarks. German Jewry <coughs> shall, as punishment for their abominable crimes, etc., have to make a contribution of one billion marks to the German economy. That will work, he said. The swine won't commit another murder. Incidentally, I would like to say, this is Goering's words, I would not like to be a Jew in Germany today. Let me get into a more personal portion of this. The events that I personally was involved in leading up to the night of the broken glass, November 9th. My brother and I attended what is the equivalent of a parochial school over in Germany. And we learned Hebrew as well as math and geography and spelling and all the other subjects. 